Hi there guys and welcome to another video. On this show we're talking about gaming industry. We're talking about game makers, game publisher, investors in game, uh, game industry insights, so we understand where are the next opportunities in the game industry and how we can build even better games. Today we're going to review one of my favorite companies, Epic Games. And uh, this company is very important because they're one of the oldest game makers around that grew to be a game publisher that developed the tools for the other developers and now they're releasing their own store. So this is something that everybody in the game industry should pay attention to. But firstly, I want to talk about their competitor, Steam, because they're mostly going to be competing with Steam and from their announcement, it is very clear they're attacking Steam's business very much. Steam had a revenue in 2014 around 1.5 billion dollars. Well, in 2017 it was 4.3 billion dollars. That means they were making money, good business model. Also in terms of users, they had in November 2012 6 million users. November 2017, just 5 years later, they have nearly 18 million users. And today we're expecting to go over 20 million in some point because it's late 2018. Some very important facts that you need to know about Epic Game Company before we start talking about what are they going to do with the store. The, everything started in 1991 when the guy named Tim started his first game right after the college, ZZT, action adventure puzzle kind of game that had a few sequels because, because it was very successful. They changed their name in 1992 to Epic Mega Games Incorporated and they stick with that name until 1999 when they became only known as Epic Games. Epic Games had a beside uh, making games, publishing games, they started something called Unreal. Uh, they had a game named Unreal Tournament and this game was a first, uh, first person shooter where you could play campaigns, uh, deathmatch, uh, team fights, things like that and was very popular. That was one of the first games to go global uh, with Unreal uh, Engine. And Unreal Engine became the tool that other developers used to make their own games. So, um, next important uh, thing happened in 2012 when uh, Tencent, Chinese giant, invested $330 million acquiring 48% of the uh, uh, shares in Epic Games. This was very strategic on both sides because Epic was looking for more uh, stable presence in Chinese market and uh, Tencent was looking for more uh, global opportunities for, for them and uh, this partnership seems to work very well. Now, uh, a, a small thing about Unreal Engine that I was talking about is they are really superior compared to all other engines because using their engine you could port your game literally everywhere. I'm gonna just put a picture here on the screen so you see where you can um, port your game when you make it with Unreal, uh, Unreal Engine. Okay, let's go back. Um, in January 2018, Epic Games acquired Cloud Gene, a cloud computing company for games from uh, UK. This was a very important acquisition because the guys who were founders behind this company were in the game industry for a long time and they knew exactly what needed to be done on the cloud to make games run even faster than they are running today. Second acquisition came in October 8, 2018, uh, when they acquired Cam Camu GG security company for games out of Finland. This uh, Camu GG uh, company had 80 game makers and publishers and nearly 100 million users or players under their security umbrella. So they had a proven track record to have a good security for games. Now, before all these acquisitions started, uh, according to some incomplete data that I have, Epic had more than 500 
employees in their company, making them one of the juggernauts in the game industry. Now, it's important to remember they have a game business. That means they are making the games, they're publishing the games, and they have B2B business, which is Unreal uh, Engine, that most other developers use to build their games. So that means they are already familiar how to do B2B, they have experience, they already have relationships with the companies using their engine to build more games. The second one is they already know how to publish the game, so they know how to all the hurdles of publishing the game, and they know how the making game process goes. So they know a lot, and they have experience doing this for many years. Now where everything comes together is when they start talking about money and how the gaming industry works. They're charging 5% for everybody using their Unreal Engine to make a game. So if you use Unreal Engine to make a game, they're gonna take 5% from all your earnings and they don't charge anything for using their engine, which is a really, really good deal if you're just starting. But if you are already established company, it might be too expensive for you. It is even more expensive if you publish your game on the Steam because Steam is taking 30% of your revenue, nevertheless, uh, how you make, uh, how much money you make. They are taking 30%. Now, Steam came out recently and said that uh, they're gonna reduce that. So they made a new announcement and they said, if you make more than 10 million US dollars, we are not gonna take 30%, we're gonna take 25. And if you make more than 50 million, we're going to take 20%. Well, this only enraged the existing uh, uh, developers on Steam because most of them cannot make a 1 million, let at least 10 or 50. So this was definitely uh, Steam communicated only to the AAA uh, publishers for the very big games and they didn't even include the 90% of the developers which are small indie studios just making uh, a small games on Steam. And uh, Epic is really taking this and going after them. So they are saying that they are going to charge only 12% 12, 12 for everybody publishing the game on the Epic Store. Now, what they are saying is if you're using uh, Unreal Engine, we're not charging anything. That means those 5% will be in those 12 and this is not going to change at all. So they're right after... Uh, 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 they said that they're gonna have their own store, they're already pointing out how they are going to charge less, significantly less. And if you're just thinking for a moment, somebody using their engine to publish a game on Steam, costing them 35, now it's gonna cost them 12. It's almost triple cheaper for them. Now, they're uh, going to address a few more things in their announcement, that is, um, have a uh, direct relationship with the players and developers control their game pages. How I understand these two points is they're going to have something like a Facebook page in their store, something like that, and uh, users are going to have some timeline. And in this timeline, um, you like a game maker or publisher, you are able to communicate to you, your users every time you have a new update, you have some bug fixes, you're doing some giveaways, simply marketing channel, they're gonna give you ability to talk directly to the players, which is interesting and I'm sure everybody who are making the games or the entire game industry would like to have this kind of relationship with the players, of course. Um, the second part that they're um, doing is connect with creators. Connect with creators is something really, really tricky and very important. It is using the influencers to do the marketing for your game and have the revenue share. In this way, you can think about like something that Amazon has, affiliate marketing with links. They're gonna have the same thing uh, built in the store so you can do the marketing from within the store. And they're gonna charge only 5% for this uh, influencer uh, marketing um, that they can provide. The second, the, actually the, the fourth thing that they are saying here is all engines are welcome, meaning if you and if you use Uni Unity or you're building the game by yourself, you can publish the game on their store. They're happy to carry. They're going to take same 12% uh, for them. And final message is if you succeed, they, they are going to succeed. And uh, I think that's a fair 
partnership in invitation from them uh, the whole idea that they know the entire gaming industry process and everything that's going on put them on my list of the very high potential for big success and uh, i think they, that if they deliver on their promises and i believe they will uh, this might be potentially the next very big big player in the game industry globally because people are mostly tired of um, their games get uh, taken down by Google recently their people are most tired of rules constantly changing and uh, not being able to communicate the rules uh, very very how to say um, because if you're changing the rules you should announce them before you change them i believe that epic has a hi history of b2b business where they are really good at communication that's the one very important thing when when it's come to the big guys like google or the, the steam they simply don't care they put the release somewhere on the on the last page on their website and then one day they just delete a lot of games and say hey we made a release no nobody was aware so i think this is, this is what's gonna give the Epic a chance to succeed in this market. However, guys, you let me know in the comments or um, uh, through messages, what do you think about this? And um, if you have any questions about Epic and how we can work together to help them or how we can all work together to make even more games on Epic, let me know and I'm happy to talk to you. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.